St. John chapter 14, and I'm going to read the first seven verses this morning, um, and I hope that uh, you will read along with me. And All right. St. John chapter 14, starting with verse number one, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Boy, that's something that we need to grab a hold of here in this day that we're living in. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Amen. Uh, let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you are truly the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. Oh God, I pray this morning that as someone listening under the sound of my voice does not know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation for them. And Lord, that they would turn their life completely over to you, knowing that Jesus is not just one of the ways to get to heaven. He is the only way. Lord, I love you today, and I thank you for your word that feeds our hearts and our lives. May you have your way in this service. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. I've entitled the message this morning, The Way, the Truth, and the Life. Amen. The Way, the Truth, and the Life. The scripture I've read this morning uh, would be very familiar to most uh, churchgoers. Uh, you've probably heard a few sermons preached on it in your lifetime. And uh, hey, you might have even heard a funeral service or two preach from this same scripture about the, that place that God has gone to prepare for each and every one of us uh, that love him. But uh, in the few first verses of uh, this chapter, Jesus was trying to console his disciples. Uh, why? Because he had just given them some disturbing news when you look back in chapter 13 verses 33 and verse 36. He told them that he would be leaving, amen, and uh, he was going to where they couldn't follow him. Now you think about that. They had been following uh, him around across the countryside for the last three, three and a half years, uh, and uh, they uh, were about to be abandoned is maybe the thought that came to their mind because they were not going to get to go with him uh, where he was planning on going. And so uh, he had been their best friend, their teacher, uh, their mentor. He had been with them, instructing them uh, of all of the things concerning the ministry, concerning the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So naturally, their hearts were troubled. Amen. But what were they going to do after that he left? Would they continue on or would the ministry fall apart? Uh, you know, and, and could they possibly persuade him differently not to go, to stay with them because they needed him. Amen. But in the last verse of John 13, verse 38, Jesus had just predicted that, G, that Peter would even deny him three times before the rooster crowed or before the cock crowed, as it says there in the King James Version. Now, looking there at verse number one that I started off reading, it said that their hearts were troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. But their hearts were aching. They were possibly afraid. Maybe they were feeling a little bit cowardly at that moment, not knowing what their future held in front of them. And Jesus perceives that. 
You know, Jesus still perceives our hearts today as well. Amen. And what did he say to them? Let not your hearts be troubled. You don't have to worry about this, guys. You don't have to be so heartbroken and so concerned. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So if the disciples could trust in Jehovah God, as they had known down through the years uh, uh, until Jesus came, then certainly they could trust in Jesus Christ. This verse is actually a good revelation of Jesus being part of the Godhead. So keep that in mind right there. I believe if we can grasp this thought this morning, it'll help us too. That trusting in God is the antidote for a troubled heart. Trusting in God is an antidote for a troubled heart. It's like putting salve upon a wound. Amen. It's like putting a, a Band-Aid upon a cut. It's something that will help us. It will change our outlook. It will change the outcome if we'll trust in God when we have a troubled heart as well. Putting your faith in God will calm your fears. Amen. Have you ever been fearful, been scared to death, so to speak? But if you will call upon the name of the Lord and put your trust in Him, it will calm your fears today. Let Him whisper sweet peace into your heart's ear today. Amen. Jesus will comfort you through the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Jesus goes on to say there in verse number 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Other translations that you look at might use the word many rooms or many dwelling places. But I like the way Jesus says it there in the King James Version. When he says many mansions. And then we hear a lot about affordable housing especially in the big cities where things tend to be really, really expensive. But this is not what Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about affordable housing that people can buy and purchase. He's talking about a place of rewards. God wants the best for His children, so let's not downplay that place called heaven that is filled with many mansions. Amen. Remember this. It's going to be a place of permanence, a place that will be there forever and forever. Boy, that's a good thought right there. If that was a story from the land of make-believe, then Jesus would have told them. He would have leveled with them and said, Hey, guys, you've heard this, I know, but it's not true. But no, he didn't do that. Because it is true that heaven is a place of reward for the saints of God. Amen. And there are many mansions there waiting for his children. But instead, he was going to prepare them a place there in heaven. Just like he is also preparing all believers one of those mansions as well. Some of you are very familiar with the uh, songwriter and singer, Miss Dottie Rambo. Uh, she wrote many, many songs down through the years. We sing some of them uh, here at the church. Uh, uh, we, uh, as a family, our family sings some of those as well. But she wrote a song one time that said, Just build my mansion next door to Jesus. You know, that would be a great place to be, wouldn't it? Right. But I would be content with just a parcel somewhere in heaven. Amen. Someone also wrote a song that I remember from many years ago that says, uh, just build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. You know, I can understand their humility as they wrote that song, uh, but you know what? I just don't believe a cabin is biblical according to the scripture that we've read this morning. Amen. But look at verse number three with me. Jesus is now telling them when he is finished preparing that place that he will come again. 
Boy, that was good news since he had just told them a few verses earlier that he was leaving and where he was going, they couldn't come at this point. So by telling them that he's gone to prepare that place for them and when he gets finished, he's going to come back again and receive them unto himself so that where he is, there they can be also. Boy, that was really good news. This is primarily speaking of the rapture of the church because all of us that are ready, watching, waiting, longing for the appearing of our Lord and Savior, when all is done in heaven, He's going to come back and receive His church to go home to be with Him one day. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. But although before that time he is still taking individuals one by one. Of course, this past week we had a precious lady from here at the church that passed on, Sister Betty Adcock. And I believe that she's there uh, with the Lord one day, uh, right now, uh, enjoying those presents uh, of the Lord. Uh, but you know there's a scripture that says, absent from this body and present with the Lord. So there with him forever is where we're longing to be. What a comforting thought that is for all of us this morning. Look at verse 4 with me. Jesus tells them, you already know the way to the place that I'm going. You already know it. <laughs> you know, how many times have we already known the answer, but yet we didn't realize it? Look at verse 5. Dear Brother Thomas, I, I tell you, he's an honest soul. And he speaks up and he says, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? So one thing we can say for him, he was honest. And, but he plainly spoke to the Lord that, hey, I don't understand what you're talking about, Lord. You know, and there's times that we have to basically say the same thing. If the Lord speaks to our hearts and we don't understand it, you know, we need to talk to him and say, Lord, would you explain? Would you tell me more? I'm not getting what you're saying, what you're trying to, to tell me. That one basically went flying over his head and didn't keep circling for the landing, right? All right. But the answer was standing in front of him. The answer was right there in front of Thomas, but yet he did not perceive it. He didn't grasp the thought that Jesus was the way. He was the way. Amen. We can't blame Thomas too much because there are times the answer is right in front of us too, and we still don't understand it, and we don't know what way that we're supposed to go. But look at verse 6. I like what Jesus said here. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want us to talk for just a little bit here about three I am's right there in that verse. Three I am's. The first one that Jesus mentions here is I am the way. The way. Not one of the ways to the Father. Not one of many different ways or opportunities. But Jesus is the only way. Can somebody say amen? Amen to that. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And if you've lost your way today, Jesus is still the way. Amen. And where there seemeth to be no way, church, Jesus is still the way. Amen. The old chorus that we sang this morning, I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord is going to make a way for me. Amen. He uh, can make a way. How can he make that way? Because he is the way. Look at the second I am. I am what? The truth. The truth. He is genuine, real truth. Nothing false or deceitful or shady about him. 
Amen. Sometimes it seems that truth has been lost in this old world that we're living in. The way many people are acting and, and speaking, uh, the, the, uh, the way that they're so greedy, uh, they've lost the truth uh, that they need in their life. But if we will turn back to Jesus, church, we will find truth. Do you believe that? If we'll turn back to Jesus, even in the midst of all of the turmoil, we will find truth waiting for us right there. He's a straight shooter with you, right? And he will never lie to you to try to make you feel good. I've seen people in this world that just absolutely gets under my skin because they tell people what they want to hear to make them feel good. If you're just telling a half truth, guess what? You're also telling a half lie. So we need to know who the truth is. And the truth will cause you to live truth in your own life as well. All right. John 1 and 14 says, And the Word, which was Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is truth this morning. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the last one there in verse 6, what is that I am? He says, I am the life, the life, which is everlasting or eternal life. We really don't start living until we receive Christ into our heart. I remember a song from many years ago. I believe the cathedrals uh, I was the one who came out with it. And it simply said, I just started living. I found me a brand new life. He's changed my direction, washed away all of my strife. I hope I got all of those words right there. Amen. But uh, I, I've just started living when I come to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. When you look at John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting, what? Life. Life. The key to this life is to repent of your sin and believe on him. Amen. So that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you look at uh, St. John chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. Light is illuminating, right? And life will cause your life to uh, be illuminated by Christ. Amen. So life is a gift of Christ to every believer. It's a gift. It's not something that you earn. It's not something you can buy. You don't work enough for that life, that eternal life that Jesus wants to give each and every one. It's simply obtained by repentance of your sins and believing in Him to be your Lord and Savior, confessing Him, and He will deliver you, cleanse you from your sins. Thank the Lord for that. The world can't understand the joy that a Christian possesses even when it seems like everything is falling down around them. But His life in us gives us hope that the unbeliever does not have. We have a hope that comes directly from God. Jesus is the life. And I'm glad that He gives it to each and every one of His children this morning. Amen? The second half of that verse says something that, boy, we need to grab a hold of today. It says, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, I don't see any wiggle room in that. 
It says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. In so many words, Jesus is saying that I am the door and you will have to come through me if you're going to get to the Father. Amen. When there's only one door in a house, if you're going to get in that house, you're going to have to go through that door. Uh, because if you try to go in any other way, you know what you're going to be considered? The scripture says a thief and a robber. Amen. So whenever I invite someone to come to the house to visit with us, I don't expect him to come in through the window, right? I expect him to come through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. And you've got to come through me if you're going to get to the Father. Amen. He is the only way. You cannot bypass him. You cannot ignore Jesus. You've got to go through him if you're going to get to the Father. I like the thought also that he will be our lawyer. Our lawyer. Amen. That will plead our case before the Father. You must admit your sin and repent. That's the only way that you're going to receive that life. And Jesus will cover your sins and cover your life with his precious blood that he shed upon Mount Calvary. Amen. So what a truth, what a promise that we have this morning that he will fill us with truth. He'll fill us with life because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I ask you this morning, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? You know, it's not uh, the same thing to know of God, to know of his church, because you can look as you go down the road and there are many churches all across our land. Hopefully uh, they are trying to uh, give out the word of God to each and every sinner and the saints of God that will help us repent and grow in grace and knowledge. But if, if you don't know him, truly know him, if you've not surrendered your life to him, then you really don't know Jesus. You really don't have the way, the truth, and the life operating in your own personal life. Accepting him is really easy this morning. And, you know, some people have made it hard down through the years. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. But I want to tell you this morning that if you will admit your sin before God, admit that you've done wrong, admit that you've said things, uh, that you have uh, thought things, uh, and you've uh, done things that should not have been done, then believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Amen. Believe that he loves you this morning. Believe that he will forgive you of your sin. And then confess that sin to him. Confess it. You don't confess it to me or anyone else, but you confess it to Jesus Christ. And you believe that he's forgiving you of all of your sins. That's the way to get to heaven. That's the way to have truth and life in, inside of your own heart. So this morning, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you've never given your heart to him, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me right now. Because Jesus loves you. And he wants you to find salvation today. Don't put it off. Don't let another hour, another minute pass by without calling upon the name of the Lord. Pray with me right now this prayer. Something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord, I admit that I have sinned. I have fallen short of the glory of God. And this morning, dear Lord, I confess to you my every sin. And I ask you, dear Lord, to forgive me, to wash me, to cleanse me, to make me pure and holy before you. Lord, I believe you died for me upon the cross of Calvary. And I accept that sacrifice 
for my own life. Lord, I believe that you are forgiving me and I am now one of your children. I love you and I want to live for you the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for me right now. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There may be some of you that you were saved many years ago, but you've fallen away from where you know you ought to be with God. Today should be a day of rededication for you as well. So again, let's pray this prayer together. And if you need to rededicate your heart and life to the Lord, do that while we're speaking, while we're talking to Him right now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again. And Lord, those that have known you once in their life, Lord. Oh God, but they're not living for you right now. They're walking in the ways of sin. Lord, they come to you right now and they're asking your God that you would forgive them. Lord, and I pray that you would do that very thing. You said that you would no way cast us out if we would come to you in faith believing. So, Lord, would you help them today to lay their sin at your feet and to rededicate their life to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name that I pray, amen and amen.